ISO 10303-239, also called Product Lifecycle Support, or abbreviated as known as the PLCS standard. Or also AP239 is the common name for it. ISO 10303-239 is a part of a step family standards which contains other standards such as for CAD and CAM AP214 and now lately the common AP242. This is an overview of the AP239 standard. We will not go into much of the details but we will present the important concepts of the AP239, the information model concepts, the scope, why, what it can be used for. And so the scope is to represent information that is uh, related to a product or a system or an asset during its usage in operations in combination with the activities that are performed on the asset or performed by the asset. These activities can be planned activities, activities like uh, how to execute maintenance management, and it's also activities that are executed, like maintenance management that have been performed and recorded, but might not be the same as the planned. It's similar in scope to what, for example, ISO 15926 is used for. But it's a little bit slightly more specific in the terms of the language used for the end users. ISO 5096 has the concept of thing as the root information class, and PLCS has starts with concept of product which can be used to represent anything from a simple to a complex systems or assets, hardware as well as software. If we look at this description, we have to access and the type of information uh, we can see in the upper part, we have the, the horizontal axis goes uh, talks about the product or system or asset according to the life cycle of a design in the left uppermost quadrant. On the right hand side we have the uh, individuals of the product or a system or an asset, an asset individual. In the lower part we also have information that is representing the support system in terms of activities, resources and, and other uh, things that is required to um, maintain and use the product. And it can be activities as well as resources. And those information entities are also type and definitions of activities. And on the right hand in the right lower part quadrant, there is also the actual performed activities and the result of that. As we can see here, we have information entities representing the asset definition, configuration of asset definitions, structures of assets, properties, documents, and so on. On the right hand side, we have an asset individual, which is the real thing, the thing that is manufactured based on an asset definition. It has a life cycle of its own and it has structures and properties and uh, a great deal of different information entities that can be used to represent the asset individual and the context where the asset individual is in use. In the lower left we have types and of definitions of, for example, activities and resources uh, and skills and people that should do maintenance or other types of activities that is in relation to the, to the asset. Uh, 
And on the right hand side, there are information entities to be used for representing the, the actual delivered support in terms of uh, representing activities that have been executed on the asset individual and also activities that have been performed by the asset individual. An important aspect is also that since an asset can have a long life, we need to keep track of the history and have a traceability uh, between the life cycle of the individual and the life cycle of a design. The asset individual can, for example, in an example of an engine being mounted in used in different vehicles and we need to have a traceability where this engine has been used and what under what type of conditions this engine has performed when it has been used in different vehicles in different environments and so on. Because then then we can also make analysis to improve the performance and improve the, the asset definitions for future releases of, of the design of assets. So it's important to have support also for these activities that, that is required for change management and feedback so that we can enable improvement of the design based on information on the asset individuals. This is another view of it. We have the asset definition, we have an asset individual, we have a support system, the type of support system, and then the support system when it has been executed on the asset as the individual. You can see the different types of information entities that is in focus for these different quadrants here. We have type of things, and then we have the real things, the tangible things. We have the types of activities, and then we have actual activities. And all of this is integrated, and there is traceability between these different information entities that belongs to the different quadrants. Now we have an overview picture of the actual information model with the core concepts. In the middle, we have uh, the product, the product version, and the product definition. These three entities are the core of the whole step standard. Um, and this is to be able to have configuration management. We need to separate the information about the master product, the, more, the product different product versions, and product definitions. These are very abstract entities. Uh, the product can be hardware or software or other things. It can be systems, can be used to represent uh, asset infrastructure and so on. And there are subtypes, subclass in the product. For example, part or normal part, part design, part manufacturing, requirements, requirements management. We have different types of breakdowns. For example, we can have maintenance management breakdowns, structures, we have system structures, system information entities, we have interfaces, we have slots, slot this. When you have a design, you have a structure, you know you, you need to have an engine, you don't know which engine to use, but you have requirements on when that engine is used in that part in the structure, it needs to fulfill these requirements. So you can have slots where you can place different things that you don't know from the start. You have document management. Further on, there are some uh, subclassing levels on top of this. And here is an example of, of a breakdown that can be a physical breakdown, you can have system breakdowns, functional breakdowns, and so on, breakdowns, and so on. And also related to this, we have, for example, activities, which is a general concept and that is then subclass to specific um, uh, activities, for example, in relation to maintenance management planning activities and other different types of activities performed on the product or system 
hardware or software, as well as the uh, activities and the result of operations that is performed by the products. We also have definition of states and we also have actual conditions and then there is a whole bunch of sorts of information entities that represent attributes and uh, properties and persons and classifications. The PLCS model, as you can see, it's a, it's a generic model and specific semantics. For example, there is no information entities that explicitly represents uh, equipment like pumps or specific parts used in uh, specific products. It's using the same mechanism as the ISO 15926, where uh, explicit uh, semantics and ontologies for actual types of parts or uh, systems are represented in so-called reference data libraries, where in the reference data library manage the definition of these specific types of parts or whatever it is, and the different attributes and rules that uh, comprises the semantics of those things. And PLCS can even use the reference data libraries that is that are managed by other standardization com communities. It's not specifically bound to any specific reference data library technology. So this is the information model showing the, an overview of the core concepts you can find there. Next slide shows an example using that information model. Uh, this is a high level overview of different instances of those information entities defined in the PLCS standard. We can see how they relate to different to the life cycle. Uh, we have a supporting system and then we have a product system or asset in the top. We, we can start with um, managing requirements. We can have functional information. We can have systems. We can have spatial zones. We can have a physical, still a design structure, but representing the physical structure of a product or a system or a facility. Then we have these cogwheels, which are items, products or parts, things that you can buy from vendors and that fulfills or realizes uh, physical design. And then on the right hand side, we have the product as realized, which is the individuals of the asset that is based on design parts, which has specific locations over time. And this spaghetti picture shows how these different instances can link together to form the digital thread. And in the middle here, we have uh, activities such as work requests, we have engineering change information, we have a work order, we have failures, definitions of states that are relevant for uh, certain design objects, and then we have the actual states that we have observed on the individuals that are based on state definitions of states and failures. And we have resources, tasks, and requirement, and resources. To summarize the PLCS information model, here are a picture that is required when using, for example, standards such as ISO IEC 81346. In ISOEC 81346, we have different aspects, spatial aspect, product aspects, and other aspects. And the information entities that can be found in the PLCS standard matches those 
concepts. We have functional elements, we have system elements, we have spatial elements, physical elements, group elements, group things. We have items or parts. We have physical items. And there is also relations in between them. So you can have functional to functional relationships. You can have functional to system, functional to spatial, and so on. So there is a rich semantics for providing different structures and integrations of information in between structures. So that sums up the overview presentations of the PSS stand.